Good evening and welcome to episode 339 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandungwa Kumalo. It's a Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the family. You are tuned in to the only daily property talk show in South Africa, helping you make better property decisions. And it doesn't matter where you are on your property journey, whether you're looking to buy, to sell, to build, or you're a tenant. This is where you come to get all your property matters attended to. And to all our regular viewers on Facebook, on Instagram, as well as on YouTube, welcome back. You know how we do it. Every single weekday, you and I have an appointment at 7 p.m. where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us tackle all things relating to property. And of course, there are also a host of great shows that you can tune into across private properties, social media pages every single weekday at 8 p.m. As it is a Monday, we're going to be kickstarting it with the Home Shoppers Show uh, with Chad at 8 o'clock this evening. And of course, that also comes to your screen every single Friday where he takes us through incredible properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. So if you ever want to get a taste of some of what you're missing out on, um, especially some of the more higher end properties, that show certainly gives us a lot of inspiration. And of course, uh, one of those things that makes you work a little bit harder uh, so you can afford some of those properties. And every Tuesdays and Thursdays, Today's award-winning farmer Mbali Nogo brings you the farming podcast tackling all things agriculture. So if you still have, if you have a keen interest in agriculture, culture from how our food is made down to even how we can use tech in agribusiness, then that is a show that you want to tune into. And for a weekly dose of inspiration from people who've walked that first time home buying journey and have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength, SD Classen brings you the first time home buyers show every single Wednesdays, also at 8 p.m. Those, of course, are the great shows that you can look forward to every single weekdays at 8 p.m. Do, of course, remember to continue engaging with us on social media, on our Facebook page, Instagram, uh, also Twitter, and we're Instagram and LinkedIn. And, of course, we're also on TikTok. You can follow myself at Zamantungwa underscore K on Instagram as well as on Twitter, always talking all things relating to property. Now, talking about our social media pages, as you'd know, on our Facebook page, and I'm already seeing some of the great love that we're getting uh, with many people present and watching from some of the top fan gang members. Uh, Sandy Stement is watching. Michelle Vomeran saying your top fan is in the house, fam. Uh, we also see you, Leseja Chona, uh, saying that that's my sweet spot. The majority of my portfolio are from various auction houses, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. So I'm keen to hear from you, Leseja, some of your experience as you you navigate you know auctions do you share with us some of your tips and tricks i know not everybody you know understands auctions and that's precisely what we're going to be dealing with this evening but of course before we get to our conversation as you know we're running a great competition on our facebook page where we're giving away 500 rands cash every single evening and and this was, of course, for our 1 million followers uh, campaign that we have extended because we also wanted to get 10,000 comments on the pinned post. And now we're setting the bold ambition of having 20,000 comments. And all you have to do to set a chance of walking away with the cash prize is to comment on that particular post. And should we call your name um, while, of course, you're watching the private property podcast with myself, Ozamando Mwakumalo, you have to be watching us live to claim your prize. I think the money is sitting at, uh, let me see what my colleague is going to bring up. I think it's sitting at 1,500 rands in the money bag, if I remember correctly. And, uh, you know, later on, we'll see who gets to walk away uh, with the money in the money bag. So if you know you've entered, make sure that you stay tuned so that you can walk away with that 1,500 rands this evening. 
Well, this evening's conversation, as the CJ has already pointed to, is about uh, auctions. We're going to be looking at the auction markets and, and how they offer buyers and sellers a simple transaction process. To help us get a better sense of you know, where the auction market is currently in South Africa, you know, some of the best practices uh, that we're seeing within the auction market, and of course, how you at home uh, can better navigate auction, auctions and auction houses. This evening, I'm joined, I'm joined by John. Jack, who's the CEO of Galetti Corporate. John, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. No, so John, I think a really great starting point would be the state of auctioning um, or the auction market in South Africa right now. Because I think one of the things that I certainly picked up and I was saying to you briefly off air is that uh, when I look at the different auction houses that I'm sort of subscribed to, I'm seeing more and more stock uh, going on the market via the auction route, which wasn't something I used to see of sort of normal, you know, houses and townhouses. More often than not, uh, they did didn't have that much stock in, in, in that department. What would you say have been some of the, you know, the trends that we've seen uh, and essentially just the stage of the auction market uh, as we have it at the moment? Well, you know, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's always auction was sort of dominated at one stage by, by auction alliance. They were the they were very much the biggest. Um, and when auction alliance shut its doors, it, it actually spawned a number of different auction houses. Um, some of the guys went to all calls, some of the guys started brawl auctions, then you have High Street and you know, so there were there were several different auction houses. There was Savile Row at, at one stage, Fort Cam High Street. And you had a number of different of these businesses starting, and some are more successful than others. And it's kind of been dominated in that space by single freestanding auction houses. And I'd say well, pretty much in the last two years, probably sort of the COVID kind of era era there's been a lot of move to online auction, so which has made it far more, it's lowered the sort of barrier to entry for, it, for anyone else to join the industry. And so you've seen a lot of new auction houses spawned and a lot of that move is onto sort of simulcast or online bidding. So you'll either have an online bidding app or you'll have a simulcast app where you basically tune into the auction um, and you you actually listen to the auctioneer live, people phone in, they go in by the app, by the website, or they could be actually on site, you know, they could actually be bidding live. And um, I think what's happened is you used to have these huge auctions, huge ballroom auction, the live auctioneer, all the rest of it. I think that's got a bit smaller where people are, you know, now bidding from, you know, from their own offices or, or home or whatever. Um, so that's probably the biggest um, move I've seen. Mm-mm-mm. And you know when when we talk about the the online auctions, John, and I actually wanted to, to chat a little bit about that because I you know I attended my first auction a, a couple of months ago, and I think the experience alone was you you think you've experienced an auction by virtue of you know watching a few clips uh, or perhaps even watching a few movies. It's- completely different ball game once you're actually attending one especially when you have a vested interest in the pop in the property i mean i went and in in some ways it was probably a bit of a rookie mistake uh you know attending your first auction and wanting that property as opposed to, you know first kind of attending and getting a sense of how an auction uh would typically work and then of course as you're saying you know covid comes in and we're seeing more and more online auctions when we look at some when we look at online auctions perhaps just take our views through some of what we should be looking out for because i think we know they're not going anywhere i think a lot of the auction houses have quite liked the 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 ability to host um you know auctions online and sometimes it's a combination of both on site Mm -hmm. and online what are some of the key things that we need to be aware of or certainly be careful about when we're attending online auctions you know, I think, and you see, you you mentioned it now as a buyer, it can be a quite daunting to go and attend an auction. You don't know, you know, it, it happens very quickly. Um, there's a lot of pressure in the room. The other buyers yeah. are there. You know, you yeah. feel, you you know, you can either get carried away or you can get sucked out by it. You don't bid. So, I think a a, a big thing to to do is like is to get educated, and I think that's a big role that we want to play now is to try and actually educate people as to the as to the auction space a little bit more. You know, I think there's a lot of um, a lot happening there that you don't actually understand. Uh, my partner in this business is a seasoned auctioneer. You know, he's been in the industry for thirty years, bought everything, cars, 
uh, residential properties, commercial properties, you know. And so there's a, he, you know, he's, he's been in that space. He was an auctioneer. And so he understands exactly what the auctioneer is saying, um, you know, when they, when they start consulting the seller, when it's confirmed or it's sold subject to, uh, subject to confirmation. All of those things mean something to the, to the more seasoned buyer. But if you're sitting there, you think the price is going up, the auctioneer starts running ahead on a price, so you just bid again. You don't know whether it has been bid. It isn't, you know, you're not quite sure whether you should be. And you want to lose the property, and that's, I suppose, half of the magic of an auction, but at the same time, half of the problem with an auction. It should be, in my opinion, um, more transparent, um, and the buyers should be more educated. So you want to try and aim to educate the buyers as much as, pos- as possible. Mm-mm-mm. And that's a, precisely what we do here on the Private Property Podcast every single evening where we simply do want to make sure that you know, viewers at home get a better sense of what they're getting themselves into, um, not just when it comes to auctions, but of course, various issues uh, in our property journey. Because more often than not, we tend to not know what we don't know. And by the time you're in the thick of things and you know signing stuff, you may not understand. And it's one of those things that we often like like highlighting that do not sign something that you don't understand, whether it's an offer to purchase and or even at an auction. I mean, when you look at the terms and conditions uh, from an auction house, there's so many things that you can easily miss and potentially not understand. So getting a really good grasp of you know things before signing on the dotted line becomes so important. And of course, that's exactly what we're talking about this evening, auction market and how they offer buyers and sellers a simple transaction process. I'm speaking to John Jack, who's the CEO at Galetti Corporate. I want us to take a quick break um, to see who the potential winner of that 1,500 rands is that is in the money bag. And when we come back, we'll be looking at you know, why both buyers and sellers would potentially go the auction route. I know that many of us are used to you know, the very uh, standard way of a property being sold or bought. And often people tend to think that auctions are only for you know, the sheriff's auctions or for repossessed properties. But as you've picked up already, that isn't the case. There are different types of um, auctions. So we'll be looking at the benefits for both buyers and sellers for going the auction route. Let's see who this evening's lucky winner is. Are you live, Zama? And that lucky winner is Riabetsui Odette Mashishi. That is Riabetsui Odette Mashishi potentially walking away with that 1,500 rands. And I do hope she's watching. I mean, it, it's quite a bit of money. I think that is a great way to start off your Monday. Uh, so Riabetsui Odette Mashishi, if you are watching, do drop us a text down here below. And that 1,500 rands is all yours. As you can see, a number of my guests that I've had before, and many of you who are regular viewers know that we've had John Jack before. We used to have that quick break in between and we would have the interview before the interview, you know, the interview within the interview uh, during the show. I think a lot of my guests still think that when we announce the lucky winner, we have enough time for our mini interview within the interview, but they always come to learn that we don't quite have enough time. And that's because you at home want all the action. You don't want us to have our own little alone time uh, in between the show. And I think we're probably going to just get right back into it this evening. And we're going to see if we're going to have, uh, you know, the, the prize money being claimed there by Rebetsi Odet Mashishi. But going on to our Facebook page, I see some of the love. So many of you at home watching. Um, we see that uh, I think one of the prudence, Mona, saying that is she's watching adult. Uh, Everton is also watching Farhan Siddiqui, one of our top fan gang members, is also watching um, this evening. And I see Kuzo Rahwabe saying that, yes, they would. And that's with reference to whether they'd buy a property on auction. I want to find out from you at home if you've ever bought a property on auction. And if you have, share with us what your experience was. Uh, you know, what are some of the things that you learned and picked up along the way uh, when you were, you know, buying your property on auction that you'd like to share with the rest of us. Uh, now, John, I think when we then look at you know the auction market and and it offering buyers and sellers a simpler uh, process, perhaps explain to our viewers what we mean by a simpler process. 
maybe I should take you back one step. So what actually happens? What what are you doing when you're buying a property in auction? So first of all, what you'll do is you'll actually register to bid. So you need to go and mm-hmm. register for the auction. And when you register to bid, there are a lot of T's and C's that you need to take, you know, that you need to take account of. The first is, is if you're the final bidder and you're knocked down on that final bid, that means that effectively you've bought the property. What happens next is you pay 10% of the, you know, 10% auctioneer's fee, okay, which goes up front as paid as the as the deposit, all right? And then from there, a normal transfer process takes place. So it gets paid to, um, you know, conveyancing attorneys. So it's not paid through an app. It's not paid online. And that's often a question. Is my money safe transacting online? It's not transacted online. It's not a payment portal that is paid to transferring attorneys. Um, so there's a when you bid, you not you might bid a million rand for the property. You need to take into account that you'll pay a hundred thousand rand on top of that million rand as the auctioneer's fee that gets paid to the conveyancing attorneys. And after that, you then sign into agreed paperwork, uh, which is the deed of sale, and so it goes through a normal transfer process. So you're registered to bid up front. Um, the auctioneer will t- generally ask for, depending on the size of auction, anywhere between five and thirty thousand rand deposit. Thirty thousand rand is for these larger commercial auctions. You know, where typically the selling price of the property is north of ten million rand, um, and five thousand rand for sort of smaller auctions where mm-hmm. uh, the, either the lot size is smaller, you know, smaller properties, uh, or whatever else it might be. So you register to a bid, go through the T's and C's, make sure you understand the T's and C's because you are binding yourself. To a contract at that point if you're the final bidder then what happens is the auctioneer opens for bids so that property actually now opens for bid the auction goes live and they ask for an opening bid that opening bid might be let's call it two million rand for the property okay and they want to try and ultimately achieve the best price and so then it becomes competitive so maybe there's not an opening bid for two million rand the auctioneer will say well can I, let's start this auction at 1.5 million. And so he calls for 1.5 million and someone bids at 1.5 million. He confirms he'd like to take it to 1.6 million, confirming the increments as he goes up. So the increments are either smaller if it's a smaller property, so in increments of 50,000 upwards, or larger if it's a larger property. So 50 million rand property would probably go up in increments of 1 million rand. And so that just speeds the auction up to, you know, to its ultimate pricing level. Um, so they might call from 1.5 to 1.6 and as 1.6 to 1.650, 1.7, 1.750. And so the different bidders bid and raise their paddles either online, they, they just click bid or they'd actually be live. They'd say, I'm bidding or on the phone, say so I'd bid to this price. Um, and the auctioneer keeps it moving around. So he tries to achieve the best bid. Where I think there's been a lot of sort of gray areas is the auctioneer bidding against me? Am I just bidding against myself? So I bid for 1.5 million and the auctioneer says 1.6 million. Are we bid at 1.6 million? Yes, I have a bid at 1.6 billion. Back to you at 1.7 million. So you bid at 1.7 million, but there was no there was no one else that you were bidding against, you know? And so there was a, there's a lot of issues around that, mm. that type of thing in auction. Now, what you need to understand is that uh, an auctioneer can continue to bid to the reserve price of the property. Okay, so the the seller will give you a reserve price, and the auctioneer can continue to bid and move the room up to the reserve price because ultimately he needs to continue moving the pricing level up. Because if it doesn't meet the reserve price, the property is not going to sell. So let's say it gets knocked down at one point nine million, the reserve price is two million, and then there's no sale. It will be sold subject to confirmation of the seller. Then you'll go back to the seller and say, look, our best price is 1.9 million. And then you'll try and negotiate out the final terms. And so that's actually what's happening in an auction room. There's a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of, and they'll, they'll be taking advice from the seller. We're taking advice from the seller. We're waiting for confirmation from the seller. That's actually asking the seller to re- re- reduce mm-hmm. their reserve price. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you need to be aware of these, uh, of these things in auction. The nice thing about bidding online is that it's very transparent. You actually know where it's been bid. So you can say the bid is now at 1.9 million, the bid is now at 1.95 million, and you could actually set a maximum bid. So you say, right, I'll bid to 2.1 million. That's what I'm prepared to pay for the property. And it will go up in the minimum increments. So if the increments are set at 50 million, if it's bid at 175, you'll immediately bid at 1.8. And if it gets bid at 1.85, you'll immediately bid at 1.9. And so it keeps going up in increments to get to your maximum bid, uh, as it were. 
Um, so that's just a little bit of the process of what happens. Then it gets knocked down to you. Ultimately, you go to paperwork and then it goes to the conveyance and it transfers. That's the auction process in a, in a nutshell. So I hope I made it clear for everyone. But it's quite, a, you know, it's quite nice to see it online because it actually helps stop the noise. It gets very noisy in the auction room and a lot of tension. And so it's actually an easier you know, first bite, as it were. Mm. And it can be quite intimidating, I think, uh, you know, when you're in, in an auction room. Um, John, one of the things that you, you mentioned that I want us to, to chat about is around, you know, you know the t- terms and conditions and making sure that you understand the terms and conditions as a buyer uh, of the auction house. A lot of the auction houses even, you know, put them up, obviously, on their website. Uh, the auctioneer will typically go through them, you know, before the auction uh, starts. And, you know, they'll even go through the, uh, the OTP and some of the key things that uh, you should be aware of what would we what would you say are some of the terms and conditions that people typically miss or don't quite understand um, especially of course those who are less seasoned who sometimes end up uh, you know bidding and being the highest and successful bidder um, but didn't unfortunately understand or miss some of these terms and conditions yeah i think maybe you need to understand is that a big thing possibly for for first time bidders is that what you bid, uh, let's say a million rand, you will need to pay 10% deposit above, over and above that. So when you bid it 1 million rand, you're actually paying 1.1 million rand for that property. So there's a 10% deposit on top of what you just finally bid at. So that's just very important to understand because you don't want to get to a level, you, oh, 1 million rand for this property, fantastic, and then you've got to pay 1.1. That additional 100,000 Rand is payable immediately after the auction. And um, so you need, to, you need to have that ready. Um, and then also you'll go to, you'll get a, you'll get a contract to so the actual final sale contract. You'll go to that immediately after the auction as well. So the auctioneer will then contact you and you'll go through that paperwork. But you, at the time that the hammer falls and you're the final bidder, you are in contract. You've agreed to those terms and contracts already. So you're legally bound. Um, and so those are... You know, that seems scary, but you're also legally bound when you sign an agreement to sale. You know, um, mm. the difference with an auction is it is unsuspensive. So it moves to unsuspensive. You can choose to finance that property afterwards, um, but it becomes unsuspensive immediately. It's not subject to finance. Finance will be approved. So you need to kind of move quickly. So, so generally, you can find, um, you know, good deals on an auction, but... Um, you need to be able to move quickly. So it's not, you know, you're not always, it's not always first time buyers in the, in the room, you know, especially if it's an in-demand property. Mm-mm-mm. We're taking your questions and comments this evening as we look at the auction market and how uh, it offers buyers and sellers a simple transaction process. I've been in conversation with John Jack, who's the CEO at Galetti Corporate. We've got a comment here coming through from Farana Siddiqui saying, I I went on an auction um, so that I got a listing from my local sheriff's office. So just being in the audience, I realized that the price is almost 50,000 to 60,000 rands um, to 80,000 rands rather cheaper than the actual property price. It was a good experience. And I think if anything, that speaks to also just the importance of first attending a few auctions uh, before you actually looking to buy something because you're also able to get a sense of you know how an auction run and you don't saying earlier that the atmosphere in the room um you know you could easily get taken away from it and i think when you're not used to it it can also easily be very intimidating and and so i i absolutely do recommend first just attending a few auctions especially if you're looking to uh you know build your property portfolio by buying properties on auction i've got a great question here coming through from saying what is the experience or qualifications and licenses that are required to be a property auctioneer yeah so to be an auctioneer it all falls under the state agents affairs board um so you'd need a registered fidelity fund certificate from the estate agents affairs board um typically uh, the company that you might work for uh, needs a needs a fidelity fund certificate themselves and then fidelity fund certificates are issued to the agent so you either have intern estate agents or full status state agents or principal estate agents so I would be the principal of this business. Um, that requires an NQF5 qualification. Full status agent is an NQF4 
um, real estate property practitioner is what it is. Um, and, you know, you have sort of two years to go from intern to full status. And recently the EAB have actually come in and said, you know, because there are a lot of people just hovering in the intern space. So they never go and write their exam. They don't complete their logbooks, all of these things. So they've said, right, after two years, you'll be deregistered and that's that. You know, you don't get another. So you must do it or you're out. So it's actually quite a big move from them, but probably quite a good one because it actually forces everyone to actually go and get their full status um, uh, accreditation and, and protects the consumer at the same time. Mm. Now, John, earlier on in our conversation, I was saying how the reality of the property market in, in general, not just specifically to the auction market, is that we're seeing quite a lot of stock on the market, um, you know, going in you know, literally on a daily basis. There's certain areas where you're seeing quite a number of properties um, going for sale. And you know, what would you say are some of the reasons um, a seller would or should opt for the auction route, uh, especially those who've potentially never sold a property. I think many people who you know buy a property, we do so much work learning about the buying process and everything that it involves that there's very little that we you know put in when it comes to then selling when we're ready to sell. And it may be because you're looking to you know upgrade or perhaps downscale your life, but we very rarely spend as much time when it comes to the sell side of our property transactions. So for the sellers at home who are looking to put their property on the market, uh, you know, what are some of the benefits for them for going the auction route instead of the conventional route? It's actually a lovely model. So our business in its entirety has two different sides to it. So there's a corporate advisory side, which deals a lot in leasing. So we deal with larger corporates on, you know, restructuring their portfolios, leasing, et cetera, et cetera. And the other side is sales. Now in that sales side, we have a private treaty, which is the normal one-to-one that would be your normal, any agency, you know, to put it in a residential context, the Pam Golden, Seafs, et cetera. Um, that's a private treaty where it's held for sale, there's interest, and you negotiate our terms with the final party. And there's no, um, you know, there's no horse trading. I don't say, well, I've, re- you know, I've received an offer from someone else at 1.1. So if you come in at one, one two, then, you know, you can't do that. That's all regulated. Um, on the uh, auction side, it's quite, it's quite rapid, so it's fast. You know when the next auction is. Um, the auctioneers drum up as much interest as possible, so they advertise widely and they, they call in a lot of people because of the way that they advertise. So it could be the next-door neighbor. It could be people in the area that suddenly pick up the properties for sale and so they attend the auction, and it has a good deadlining mechanism. The auction is on the 20th of September. That's it. You know, you've got your chance to bid. If you're not that keen, then you can see if it sells on the on the auction. And then if it doesn't, you can transact afterwards. If you're very keen, you can try and bid pre-auction. So a lot of the time what happens is people say, listen, we will pay this amount. And if it suits the seller, they'll say, you know what, let's actually not go to auction. We'll just sell by private treaty before the auction. That happens quite a lot. Um, and then at the auction, it's very transparent. So you know where the pricing level set. But the critical thing is, is to have your bidders at the auction. Because if you don't have your bidders or they're not attending or, attending or they're not engaging, then you can get no one bidding. And then it looks like, oh, well, there's no interest in the property. And so the, mm-hmm. the property doesn't ever move up to, toward its value. So then, you know, you can, you can land up with like a, a property that is tainted in that respect, you know. So... Auction is excellent when the property is in huge demand. That is, <laughs> that's always a great one for auction, you know. There's a natural market for it. It's definitely going to sell. That allows a very clear and transparent and fast pricing mechanism. It's also great in an in a, in a area, for example, where you have no idea where the demand is going to come from. So a, a random area doesn't have any dominant agency or brokerage in that area. You advertise extensively, people see the auction, and so then they start getting in contact and say, we want to we register for this, for this property, and they know that it's a certain date, so they have to perform. So it pulls people out of the woodwork, you know? Um, and then the only other mechanism that there is, is, or that I know of certainly, is that a sealed bid process. A sealed bid is like a quiet auction. So it says, right, you 10 bidders are going to bid, but you're going to give us a sealed envelope with your price. Okay. And what happens is then everyone gives your price and you'll say, okay, well, you two buyers are very close. Okay. 
we'd like you to run a due diligence. So for a more technical or a larger property, this is good because usually a due diligence is required. Mm -hmm. You run a month long due diligence. And at the end, you ask for the best and final binding offer. So prior to that, it's a non-binding. It's just an indication of interest, interest. And at the end, after the due diligence, you ask for a final binding, best and final terms. And then they bid. And then you select whoever the best bid is. And then you, you know, that that deal is, you know, goes to legals and is closed out. So it's like a, it's the best of the private treaty and the auction world. You know, we run all three of those. Um, we really thought that, you know, auction was an additional uh, mode to market for uh, our buyers and sellers. Um, so it's new for us. But the online space is massive. Some of the um, businesses in the UK boast 1.9 registered, 1.9 million registered bidders. You know. So that's significant. Uh, that's that's. I think at the moment, and I've uh, you know I've quoted this before. I think maybe only five percent of transactions happen in an online mechanism in South Africa. But I think that's going to go up. You know, looking at um, the sort of global trend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually hadn't heard of the sealed bid process um, yet. So I've certainly learned something. I think it's an interesting way uh, to bid, particularly the bigger you know, properties, as, as you've highlighted. That's, prime that's a, yeah, yeah prime I mean, it's long-term leases, you know. Because those are the kinds where you know that the leases are there. You also want to make sure that you, you know, properly vet perhaps part of the, the tenants that are there, anchor tenants. Uh, so you probably even want to go through, you know, the nature of their lease agreements and, and see if you're happy with them. Uh, so I think that that that's also a big learning moment for me. Um, so yeah, another, heard- another great space for that is a sort of sale and lease back from a, a listed yes. occupier, you know, yeah. so a listed yeah. manufacturer, a listed yeah. – because – when they go to market and they're going to sell an asset and it's a major asset, they actually have to issue a, a sense announcement. To, yeah. And then that, that has all different ram, all sorts of different ramifications on their stock price and all the rest of it. So what they actually want to do is get to a point where it's a guaranteed deal. So prior to like announcing to the market, we're selling all these properties, you invite, say, 10 to 20 bidders. They all bid. And then you get to a point where it's a guaranteed deal. And then you release the sense amount, announcement as opposed to like, throwing a cat amongst the pigeons in the market, why are they selling their assets? You know, what price will they sell them for? There's too much subjectivity in, in there. You know, people are uh, open to their own opinions and, and as a result, they either buy and sell it or sell the stock of the company based on what they think is going to happen. You know, why, yeah. why is this company selling all of its assets? You know, so, yeah. you know, you get a better opportunity to just explain it calmly once there is a guarantee deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jack, John, before I let you go, any final tips for our viewers at home when it comes to uh, you know, the auction market, whether they're looking to buy properties on auction or looking to list their properties on auction? Uh, despite downloading the Galetti auction app, um, I would say follow everyone in auction. You know, you want to follow all the main auctioneers. Um you know, download their apps, register to bid, be in the game. You've got to be in it. You can't sort of like sit there on the sidelines. Go to auctions. Understand what's there. Understand what's bid and understand that market around it because you don't want to overpay, obviously. Um, so get some knowledge of the market. Ask the questions pre-auction. The, the, all these companies are there to answer your questions. They're there to get a successful transaction for the seller. Um, and so they happy to answer your questions, share information, anything you want to know, just phone and ask. Don't feel like an auction is something that you rock up to on the day and bid cold. That, that doesn't happen. The seasoned guys know all about the property that they're bidding on. They've phoned us. They've asked questions. We've had to send them packs of information. They've gone mm. to the property. They've put in a lot of effort prior to the auction so that when they bid, they know exactly where they're going. So don't just don't rock up cold and like start throwing money around. I think that's a bad idea. Mm. And if, it, if anything, John, I think that's actually such a great note to, to leave it at. Do your research as much as possible when you are looking to buy a property in auction. And even when you're looking to sell, because I think you also as a seller want to have a good understanding of uh, you know, where you're going to first even price your property. Of course, you know, the, the team will help you out, but you also want to be clear on you know, what the right price and sweet spot is. And if you can see that there's a downward trend in some of the properties 
in, in your area or in the complex, you need to be aware of it in case you get offers that aren't quite what you were expecting. Well, John, we're going to leave it there this evening. It's always such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Thank you. so much for joining us. Cheers, Ab. And that is John Jack, who's the CEO at Galetti Corporate, wrapping up the Monday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzaman Dungwa Kumalo. Unfortunately, we did not have Rebet uh, Odet um, Mashishi uh, claiming that 1,500 rand. So we are going to have a roll over to tomorrow evening. It's going to be sitting at 2,000 rands. That's going to be the money in the money bag. Remember, if you know that you have entered the competition, you want to be watching us live so that you can claim your prize. Well, I'm off. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. The Home Shoppers Show with Chad is coming to your screens at 8 p.m. Until then, hope you're staying home and staying safe.